Welcome back to Vampire. To help out Lady Ashbury, aka the vampire who helped us before, we need to speak with the three nurses listed on the right side of the screen. We've gotta see if we can find out who is blackmailing them. But before that, I want to start on a side quest. So we still need to speak with Corcoran and Branigan. Branigan just went over there, and this is Corcoran Tippets. We need to interrogate them about their what seems to be malpractice with that patient that we found in the morgue. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. And I'm also going to live forever. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. That's a great... Compliment? Um. <clears throat> a very, very backhanded compliment. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more unto the breach. Huh. Um, how's our... So... Was that considered mesmerizing them? I don't think it is. I know my level, like up here you can see my level of mesmerize is 1, their level is 2, so I can't defeat them. If I wanted to, say, mesmerize them to feed on them. But I think that's only for feeding, right? That doesn't apply to the mesmerize that we use during conversations, does it? Actually, maybe it does. It probably does, because I told them, like, I told Tippets that they should rest, and they said no. So I, I guess it wasn't effective. I think I need to raise my Mesmerize skill. And yeah, just telling them to rest out of context probably seems kind of weird. I'm not sure if you remember, but some nurse a little while ago told us that uh, Tippets was a, a good, like, good at their job, but they were just pushing themselves too far and didn't know when to quit. So that's what that was about, trying to convince them to rest a little bit. Oh yeah, I guess it was Bran again that told us about that. Um, let's try to appeal to the fact that patients are going to get hurt. In fact, that's probably what happened with that patient in the morgue. Your attitude is irresponsible, Doctor. Believe me, I've seen so many medical errors caused by exhaustion during the war. You're right. This is a war, Dr. Reed. 
and I don't intend to surrender. Okay. That wasn't effective. Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? I have no time for such triviality, my dear colleague. We're here to save lives. Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks, maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed a body. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Is that the end of it? Do I still have that quest? Oh, right, I still need to talk to Branigan. Gwyneth Branigan about that. Good evening, Nurse Branigan. Good evening, Doctor. Have you seen a strange man visiting any of the nurses here? I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett's does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannock. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Yeah, I mean, it, it just makes sense to keep him, really. I can't say I approve of what you did. But as a field surgeon, I know that some situations require you to bend the rules. I'm not proud of what I've done, but to contain the epidemic must be our priority, so we can't afford to lose Dr. Tibbets. Agreed. I've decided that I won't reveal Dr. Tibbets. Shall we say, misdemeanor? I'm so glad you share my point of view. Dr. Tibbets is a brilliant practitioner. We most definitely need his know-how. I hope you're right. This is a huge risk we're taking. Dr. Tippett's must regain his confidence. Please, keep this decision between you and me. He doesn't need to know you've found out. I've, I failed a hint, apparently. Oh well, that's fine. Do you know if any of the hospital staff have criminal backgrounds? The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. So I keep seeing references to women, I guess, not being allowed to practice medicine? And that made me realize that I know, like, absolutely nothing about women's ability to be a doctor in what I think is the early 20th century, because I believe this game is set around the time of the Spanish flu, which would be early 20th century, around like 1920 or so. So I think it's set around that time. And um, just looking at some of the law in the UK, it looks like, um, it looks like the UK Medical Act of 1876 
was the uh, first time that women were actually allowed to be certified to be a doctor. And of course, actually getting certified and, you know, being able to go into a university and be trained is a whole other thing, but this at least allowed them to be certified. So this is at around like 30 or 40, like 40 years after that medical act. And I guess even at that time, I guess women were just not allowed to be doctors. Okay, um, let's speak with Pippa. Good evening, Nat. Good evening, Doc. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. She is definitely a shithead. Miss Jones deserves our help. No, no, I don't think she does. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. <laughs> Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? Uh, okay, so I'm guessing... Um, I'm guessing Jones saw uh, Pippa and... Uh, what's that guy's name? The um, ambulance driver? Something in the hooks? I think she saw them, as she put it, coverting or whatever on hospital time. But yeah, I certainly don't blame them. I mean, on hospital time, what, don't they work like 24 hours a fucking day? Jesus. As Pippa said, gotta find some happiness where you can. Jones can go fuck themselves. Goodbye. Alright, Dorothy Crane. What's going on here? So I've been looking for Dorothy Crane. The quest took me here. I think they're meeting with a mobster? Eavesdrop. V to activate your senses. If a citizen is behaving suspiciously, their heart will emit a distinctive glow. By looking at the citizen, you'll unlock a special interaction. Oh, I'm going to find your glow and I'm going to use it against you? <laughs> Um. Did something happen? We have dodged death so many times. Like, is this is this monster gonna try to attack me if I do something, or no? What what's what's this? What is that on the ground? You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I hope to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. Did I fail the, like, special interaction thing, or was that the special interaction? Retrieve the thug in the sewers. Retrieve. Interesting choice of words. I bet we're gonna get into some combat now, aren't we? Oswald, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. What? What's going on? Are you Oswald? He's locked the door behind him. I need to find another way to follow him. What weapons do I have equipped, by the way? Ooh, I've got no ammo for either of these. Okay, well, we better switch that to something else then. So, stake, like, I haven't used the stake in a long time. That'll give me the ability to stun, which is quite nice. And this just gives me blood directly. So stun indirectly gives me blood. This directly gives me blood. 
Hmm. I'll, I'll use the steak. Especially since I upgraded how much blood I get from biting. Whoa. What the fuck's going on down here? This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Also, I hear monster noises. Rogue Skull. Hmm. I suppose it doesn't matter which one I go for first. Let's get a sneak attack in. Bite me. Bad at avoiding that. <laughs> Once again. Super need to level up. I actually have quite a bit of XP. Common barbed cudgel. Come on. Rusty box of pills. <laughs> Let's take a look at that cudgel. Not the used bludgeon. Common barbed cudgel. Oh, actually it looks very similar to the bludgeon, but it's actually different art. 110 damage. Uh, attack speed is one-third of the machete, though. Yeah, so one-third of the machete in attack speed, but it only does a little bit less than double the damage. Definitely not worth it. Although, it does do stun damage as well. Um... 10 stun, 15, so this, this actually does more stun than the stake. Hmm. Oh, it's two-handed. Eh. Eh, no thanks. Oh, you know what I do want to try, though? Oh, I was going to switch to that two-handed scythe, but actually, apparently we found some ammo for the shotgun, so never mind. Let's just go with the shotgun. Oh, hi.
Ban of the Dragon. Concerning the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. Right, that's the people that, um, that one person in the, um, in the pub, uh, Swansea? Yeah, yeah, that was Swansea. Uh, Swansea belongs to this club, right? Like, a band of vampire hunters or something? Sort of. Um, concerning the Brotherhood, I would advise our members to be very wary about these so-called scholars. Yes, indeed, most of them are always affable and respectful whenever they approach us, but it would be quite unwise for a discreet circle like the, um, Ascalon Club to foolishly speak about our goals, our members, or our traditions. I also would like to remind our fellow members that the Brotherhood itself is ancient enough to have some mysterious traditions. One of them, according to some informants, could be the ritual of the so-called Ban of the Dragon. It seems that in certain conditions, when the Brotherhood, uh, when the Brothers of St. Paul find a violent or bloodthirsty immortal, they call upon him this ban. What is it exactly? I don't know. Does it really exist? I don't know for sure either. But what I've established as facts, it is that whenever a hostile or vindictive vampire has threatened London, it disappeared without a trace after the Brotherhood pronounced a ban upon him. The loyal Fergal Bancha himself has never been foolish enough to openly provoke the Brotherhood. This is a lesson we must all remember. Never be considered a dragon by the Brotherhood. From the Law of Ascalon by Lord Redgrave, Founder. Lord Redgrave? That's a dramatic name. The Ban of the Dragon. Don't never be considered a dragon by the Brotherhood. A dragon? It's weird to see the word dragon flying around when everything we've seen is vampires. Can you apply the word dragon to a vampire somehow? Oh no, I almost pressed F, which would have eaten the little rats. I'm sorry. I'll probably eat them by accident at some point. Okay, I think I heard a voice coming from this way. Citizen to save. Careful, the endangered citizen may not survive the next night. Go check on him. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Oh yeah. Oh, couple skulls outside, okay. Can you accidentally hurt citizens? Like if I use my shotgun on the skulls, could the bullets hit the citizen? I'm just gonna go for it. I got you, I got you. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here! I need to get out! I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay, okay, I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out! All right, Mr. Thatcher, you're safe now. Do you think you can reach the street by yourself? Yes, yes I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. You rescued a citizen. He'll return to his district the following night. Oh, so I think that uh, before I said goodbye, that gave me the option to basically feed on them if I wanted to. Actually, could I still... Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, I can still press for details. Oh, they have a headache. Poor baby. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Like, some of the things you can cure people of are super serious, but others are like a headache. I mean, a headache sucks, of course, but it just, it seems to pale in comparison to everything we're dealing with, with this pandemic, epidemic, 
What's the difference between a pandemic and an epidemic? I think a pan 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 is all right. So pandemic is like, well, bigger. Oh no, that's a level transition. Oh, I don't know where I'm going out to, but there's a whole other unexplored area. Is this where I'm supposed to go? I don't know where it took me out to, but I don't think it's where I need to go. By the way, the reason I'm so, like, like terrified or mortified or disturbed when I uh, accidentally do a level transition is because this game has a bug. Apparently with Ryzen processors specifically, uh, basically my loading times are like 30 seconds to a minute. It takes an incredibly excruciatingly long time. There's no fix. It's existed in the game for months. Ooh. This is a boss arena, isn't it? Oh yeah. Okay, how am I doing on ammo for the shotgun? Eh, six shots. Oh, hold on, I have some sort of a uh, serum. Right, I made like a regeneration serum, didn't I? Regenerate 300 health points instantly, then 150 over 15 seconds. And my life is 590, so that's pretty damn good. Yeah. So over 15 seconds, it'll restore pretty much all my health. 450 out of 590. And that's on T, and I've got two of them. Or two uses of the same one, at least. Okay. Okay. Sewer beast. Whoa. What sort of creature is this? What is that? Okay, um, I should have some rounds for the pistol, I hope. Let's just go ahead and put it in there. Zero out of 17. Okay, I have a bunch of shots for it. Cool. to check, but I should anyway. These boss fights really are exhilaratingly difficult. They're pretty long too. Like, they're, they're really long fights. 
Nurse Crane's voucher. Oh, that's what was in the tube, written in the tube. If you are sick, if you have no money, whoever you are, wherever you're from, come see Dorothy to get help. No tricks, no charges, no questions asked. Just find Darius Petrescu's house and present this coupon. And then the same thing in a different language. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Just quite odd. This is the thing's lair, it's been feeding a lot. Oh, this is where I came from, isn't it? So I just needed that and then I need to now reach Whitechapel. Well, I've now taken the exit that's near where I saved that citizen. There seems to be just a little bit down on the uh, waterfront here. I think I entered the sewers right about here, and now I'm here. Um, so I need to go to Whitechapel to follow up on this quest, and that is actually pretty far away. It's all the way over here. It feels like that's going to be really difficult and long, because I'm expecting there to be enemies all along the way. Maybe there won't be? I don't know. But either way, uh, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to go across town to Whitechapel.